Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. Thanks for coming, hanging out with me today. It's great to see you guys back for part two of our tips and tricks on how to use these manufacturing objects. Now in our last video, the tips that we saw were more oriented towards novice builders. We did work up to, oh, let's say maybe journeyman level tips. But today's video, we're going to pick it up from there, and we're going to work all the way up to these master level tips for these objects. And we're going to build this little factory that we're looking at. Now, if you are a novice builder, don't freak out. I promise by the time this video is over, you'll fully understand each and every system, how they work, and what they're used for. So, let's quit messing around and let's get started. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Dean, and to start off with, I think we need to take a look at these sorters. Uh, they are the first objects that are going to go into our build today. Now, there are two different types of sorters. One is an uh, object sorter. So, let's say we put a bowling pin and a bucket in there. It would only sort those two objects out. Now, the second sorter is a component sorter. So, let's say we put an object in there that has copper, steel, and plastic. Any objects that go through it that has at least one of those components in it would be sorted out. As a personal note, I feel that the component sorter is the more useful sorter of the two. So, that's what we're going to use in our build today. And I'm going to put up three of them down here on the bottom floor. Now I also am going to go up on the top and I'm going to put three more in up here as well, right above the three that we have down on the lower floor. Now the reason I've chosen six sorters is because after building Tanner's Toy Factory, I discovered that six sorters is about all you need to sort all the components that you would want to use in any one of the forges, or a multitude of forges. So realistically, I don't think anybody needs more than six uh, sorters out. In Tanner's Toy Factory, I do have eight, just in case, but I'm not using two of them. So that's why we're sticking with six on this build. Now what we're doing is we're using a tip that we saw in our first video, and we're adding on conveyor storages and vacuum hoppers to each and every one of our sorters and this way we'll be able to store all of our sorted objects and then be able to pull them out when we would like to via the vacuum hoppers okay next let's take a couple of these elevator conveyors and snap them to our vacuum hoppers on the first floor what the idea here is, is to be able to take our sorted items on the first floor and get them up to the second floor where they'll match up with the vacuum hoppers that are up there. And we'll need to build a conveyor belt system around that so they all match up. So I'm up on the second floor. I've built the floor. I have a conveyor belt stand out and I'm lining it up to this uh, vacuum hopper that's on our left hand side. What we're going to be able to do is run some conveyor belts across the front of it. So I've dropped the floor down one floor thickness. Now we can run more conveyor belts underneath of these vacuum hoppers. So when the items come out, they'll come out on this conveyor belt system and then we'll need to continue it around and see if it matches up with our elevator conveyors. But I can't get a conveyor belt to snap in. The reason is, is we're seeing our first snapping issue that's caused by build order. A friend of mine in St. Shecklador, we have conversed numerous times about this subject. We feel that most OPs never reach their full building potential 
because they fully don't understand the importance of build order. As far as I'm concerned personally, I feel that build order is the number one most important thing to know when it comes to building like this. So, because of that, from now on, every time we have an issue with build order, I will just holler it out so therefore you can see it. Just like right here, build order. Okay, now back to what we're doing. Our conveyor belts are not lining up with the front of these elevators. So I'm adjusting them back using the same conveyor stand that we started off with, placing these objects out in the beginning. Now that I've got them lined up pretty good in the front, they are tucked underneath our vacuum con uh, hoppers pretty good, but I don't think it'll be an issue. Normally what I would do is I would align one of the floors up to match. That way we wouldn't have any offset problems. But because of the way that we need to feed our sorters, we've got to keep the sorters the way they are. Therefore, we're not going to be able to adjust any of these objects back and forth to get it to match. So now that's what we're doing here, is we're actually going to be building the next system that will transport objects from the first three sorters to the bottom three sorters. I've taken two half a conveyor belts, put them together, took the middle one out. Now by holding A and the left bumper, I can drop this object straight down to the floor. Once it turns green, can go ahead and release it. Now keep this in mind. Since we did snap that to the top sorters, it's running in the direction the sorter is going. We actually need it going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to highlight it and spin it around. Now the only way you can do this is if you use your left and right triggers. If you move any at all, it will throw it off and it won't be perfectly lined up. It's a little bit harder to do that because of having to use only the left and right trigger. Now we can go ahead and continue the rest of our conveyor belts across to the top of these sorters. And yeah, you can see all of our junk will drop right down onto this platform and then go into the sorters on this side. Now there is a drop down hop hopper in our inventory but it's big, it's bulky, and it's an entire story tall. This is only about a half a story of a drop, so this is really about the only way that we can do it. Now since these objects are going to be dropping, there's a high chance that it could spill out. So what I'm doing is I'm just using this glass half a wall from the barn section to, you know, kind of house it in. and. Even though I'm not showing any walls in the background, we're just pretending that there are some walls there. And the outside wall would actually catch that part as it dropped down. Now those objects can travel across there and come into this side, which I've got a little bit of uh, housing here to keep that from spilling out as well. We just need to add something here at the end so they don't spill out towards the front. Okay, now basically what's going on here is this is where junk is going to first enter our system. So what we need to do is run a few more of these conveyor belts out into the settlement. Now I've got a elevated conveyor, so that way we can bring our stored objects up to the second floor, which will pass through these first three sorters first. Any item that's been sorted will go into the conveyor storages. Anything that hasn't been sorted or accepted up here on the top floor will drop down onto the secondary system. It'll come across over to this side and drop down into the next three sorters, which will then sort everything that's left over. Build order. Now let's go ahead and continue our conveyor belt system that's coming from our vacuum hoppers. And if you remember right, we've got six. Three of them are the elevated conveyors, while three of them are up on the top floor. 
Now basically what I'm getting ready to do here is the same thing we did when we made our secondary system from our sorters. I'm going to highlight that and bring it down until it hits the floor. But before I can do that, we need to lift our floor up one floor thickness. And you'll see why here in a bit. So what I'm going to do is take out a floor, line it up here the best I can, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always adjust these later on to fit the objects that are going to be on top of them because usually they don't line up with what you're doing. Now that I've got a few floors down, I can highlight this conveyor stand, bring it down till it turns green, and now it's perfectly lined up with the conveyor belts that we just brought it off of. Now I can build all of this part of the system off of that piece. But keep in mind, it's running a different direction because we brought it off of another system. So I need to flip it around. But I actually did it wrong here and spun it the wrong way. And here in a bit, I'll have to come back, or I'll discover that here in a second, and then we'll have to come back and re-spin it around again the right way. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually just trying to line it up with the belt that's above our head, the conveyor belt. And here's where I discover it's running the wrong way. This is the piece I need to add on. It needs to go the other way, but, you know, we can see it's not going to. So once again, I'll just highlight this object, spin it around. I can only use the right and left triggers. Remember that. If you move, it just throws everything off. All right, we're back on track. Okay, let's finish the rest of this part of the system. First thing I'm going to do is put on one of those Y-shaped conveyor belts. It allows junk to flow to the left. The next thing we need to do is get out a forge. This one's the ammo forge. I'm going to line this up and straighten it up the best I can right here. Then I'll go ahead and snap on a half a conveyor belt. What I want to do is I want to adjust this until the edge of the conveyor belt is right at the edge of the conveyor belts that we just made. And now we can see why we're one floor height higher than the floor. That way objects can drop down onto that half a conveyor belt and go into the forge very easily. Now we're going to want to repeat the same process for the next forge. So we're adding another one of those uh, Y-shaped conveyor belts on that junk flows to the left on. And once again, uh, this is the explosives forge. I figure, you know, what better things to have than weapons and explosives, or ammo and explosives. So uh, lining this up just like we did the ammo forge until this end of this half of conveyor matches up with the edge of the other conveyor. And yeah, that's going to work nicely. Those objects will drop right down on there. Now, we're going to put a conveyor storage right in the center. What we want a conveyor storage here for is when we make an item, we want it to drop down onto this part of the system and then the item that we made be stored for later retrieval. Now, as I'm lining this up, we can notice that our conveyor storage is the same height as our forges are. So what we need to do is drop the floor down one floor thickness. This allows us to get, oh, build order. This allows us to get our conveyor belt underneath the forges, so that way those items drop down onto them nicely. Let's move a couple of these things out of the way. I'm starting to run out of room here. And, uh, you know, now we can go ahead and replace our floor back up to its original height. Now, what I'm going to do is a trick that we saw in the first video and in the beginning of this video, where we can put our storage hopper and vacuum hopper on in one system. Now, when I snap the storage hopper on, or the conveyor storage, it will sink into the floor, as well as most of these objects. So, we'll go ahead and place them in. We'll get out two more of the vacuum hoppers, and I'll align them up to the forges, you know, straight as I can. Now, we're going to use another tip that we saw in video one, where we can take this conveyor 
stand, move it closer to our forges, and insert these vacuum hoppers into it quite far. And I'm just going to keep adjusting this until I can get all of the shroud into the forge where it's just only the uh, vacuum hopper sticking out. Now one thing to notice here, see when I take my cursor off the forge, notice how it's all black inside. When I put my cursor on the vacuum hopper, it highlights it, but you cannot see the shroud inside of it. That's what it's going to take for objects to flow in and out without being hindered by that little shroud cover. Okay, now I don't like our vacuum hopper that's connected to the uh, conveyor storage down in the floor. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this conveyor stand to pop it up out of the floor. It doesn't matter if it's in the floor or not, it will still suck items out of that storage container. And now that we got that popped up out of the floor, let's put a conveyor elevator on this. And I think we'll do one without a stand. We're going to want to run objects underneath of that here in a second. Now let's put a couple of these directional arms on, and let's see what we've got so far. Okay, objects can run over here to our ammo forge. When we make objects, they'll go into the middle there. Uh, if we decide to make explosives, it'll come over here. It'll also drop it off into the middle where we can retrieve them. Then on the sides, we have uh, vacuum hoppers where we can pull all of the junk out of our forges when we want to. Now, let's go ahead and continue that part of the system. Once we have pulled junk items out of our forges, we need a way to retrieve them back to be resorted again. So I'm just going to lay a couple of those conveyors down on the floor, put this elevated conveyor up, and now we can just go ahead and run conveyor belts clear over to the beginning of our system. And once we kind of figure this out, this is a way to drop items back down into the beginning part of our system so all of our sorters can resort these objects. But, oh no, look, I'm off. Ooh, there's a good six inch gap right there. Um, that just goes to show if you're off a little bit, at the end you could be off a lot. Well, we'll have to come up with something to fix that. Okay, now back at the beginning of the system for our forges, we need to make a catch to catch all the objects dropping down uh, from the top conveyors. And I'm noticing like, oh, well right here's where we're off. Uh, right there's where the uh, objects drop down. Yeah, there's a good six inches here. So I'm going to take a few minutes and reposition all of these objects that we just built so that way we line up a little better. It's pretty easy. I just take our first original piece, move it to about where I think it needs to be, then I'll just run around and move everything else accordingly. Now, once I've got all that done and I go back over to where uh, this was off, oh, yeah, that's real close. I think that'll work and it'll be okay. Now we'll go back over to where we were making our catch, finish that off. There is a little bit of maneuvering you're going to have to do here. No need to show it all. We have seen them numerous times in other videos. All right, we've got it all together here. Yeah, that looks great. Items will drop down, catch nicely there, and then we'll be sent out to our forges. Now back over at the beginning part of our system, I'll just put up a couple of more catches here. I like these glass windows. That way, if I'm watching, it's easy to see the objects moving or passing through these areas. Okay, enough farting around here. Let's get back over to our forges. What we need to do is finish off the system that retrieves any items our forge made, forges made. So what I've done is put up uh, a barn wall. The only reason is, is it made it super easy to snap a couple of floors to it. I used the curved concrete wall technique, lifted the floor up a few levels. That way I can run a couple of these conveyor belts across the front of our elevator conveyor. We want any loot coming out of that or any items coming out of that 
to be dropped onto this part of the system. Now right there, I just missed it. We did have a build order issue, so build order. And once I've kind of aligned this up and I got it straight, I can go ahead and snap that half a conveyor in. Now, what I'm getting ready to do here is going to be a little confusing. What we need to do is put one of these Y conveyors on with the arm going to the right. And I need to adjust that. The way I'm going to adjust it is the same way we first laid these objects out. So I'll put that half a conveyor in, and I'll move this back however far I think I need to move it for that arm to match up with the lower conveyor. All right, now this did take a couple of tries before I got it correct. But keep in mind, if you're doing this, it has to be as close to perfect as you can get it. Because this is the confusing part. We're not actually going to be using it on this system. It's going to actually be connected to another part of the system. And this is the only way that we could align those two systems up. Now what we need to do is go ahead and put a couple of these conveyors, these 45s, going down. Then we'll put a couple of regular conveyors on for now. Now the system that the Y arm going to the left is going to go on is the system that comes from our forges. You know, the ones that suck all the unwanted objects out of the forge and then sends it over to be resorted again. What this is going to do is it's going to allow us allow us at any time to pull any object out of our system and it will drop it down onto the conveyor that is coming from the storage container that holds any items our forges made and since we're bringing those items to us up at the control center it makes perfect sense to drop those items onto that same system so then they'll be brought to us up at the control center and now I'll just go ahead and put up a couple of these conveyor elevators to get up to the, where the uh, control center is going to be. And we can kind of get a pretty good look at what we've got going right now. At this point, most of this build is complete. We do still have a couple of things to do. But before we continue, there's one thing I'd like to mention real quick. And that is, when you're building these manufacturing objects, they will consume a lot of resources. And one of them being gears. Now what I'd like to do is show you guys where you could pick up a few extra gears. Oh, 100, 150, 200. Just depends. The first place is from Rufus at Hotel Rexford in Good Neighbor. He does carry a shipment of 25 gears. The second place that you can find gears very easily is Wilson Adama Toys Factory. Uh, it's down by Merkwater Construction Site, and it has a lot of giddy up buttercups. Uh, here you can get a lot of gears and a lot of screws, plus a lot of steel. Okay, we've only got three more things to do. The first one being this overflow system. It's connected to the last sorter, so any objects that weren't accepted or sorted will pass into this system. Once they're here, we can use this vacuum hopper to pull it up through this elevator and drop it off onto our loot conveyor, where its final destination will be our control center. Now, the second thing we'll want to do is continue our conveyor belt system over to whatever container we want to put our objects in before we send them in to be sorted. And the final third thing is the electric and the wiring. So we'll fast forward into the future where that's already done. Our factory is fully wired, it's completely hooked up, and it is ready to make something. So, let's do that. And with the flip of the switch, we're off. Alright, our factory is in operation. There goes uh, our stored objects from a container. They're heading out to be sorted. We've got six separators out there, so any components that are in in any one of these items, you know, that sorter or separator will 
uh, take it out. Now anything that didn't get accepted on the top floor drops down to the bottom where it can be sorted and separated here. Now let's take a quick look at our overflow because we do have something that our sorters didn't accept. Once again it'll run down here, be stored for later on whenever we want to pull it out of our system. All right, now that all of our objects have been sorted, let's head back to the control center, turn, up, turn that part of the system off. Now let's go ahead and make something real quick. We've got an ammo forge up, an explosive forge. Let's just go ahead and do some ammo. Once again, 45s. So we'll turn the forge on. We can see all of our systems that are connected up that were individual are working in tandem now. Our first items that we're going to need will be steel and um, a fertilizer. So steel is in the first container. Fertilizer is in the second container or the second vacuum hopper. Now that those items are coming out onto our conveyor belt, they're making their way down to the forge. Once they reach the forge, it starts creating the uh, ammo that we told it to make and those items are passing into that loot storage container down there in between the two forges. Now let's shut our forge off. Let's tell it to make, uh, let's do shotgun shells. We'll turn the forge back on. Now we do have quite a few objects in our forge, but we're missing lead. Lead is in our sixth vacuum hopper, which is down on the bottom floor. You can see the lead is now coming out through the conveyor elevator and is on our conveyor belts heading to the forge. Once it gets there, it'll start creating shotgun shells. And yeah, you can see them passing down onto the loot conveyor, or the conveyor storage. Let's get a little closer look. We can see the ammo coming out, going into that uh, storage container, and it does have a vacuum hopper hooked to it. Now that we're all finished making ammo, let's get our junk back in the system. All I had to do is turn on the very first switch that we turned on to sort our objects and everything's being sucked out of the forges back into the beginning part of our system. And it'll all go back in there and be resorted again. Okay, this switch right here has kind of a unique function. We uh, flip the switch that is bringing the ammo to us that we've already crafted, but it looks like we've got a lot of steel in our system. So I can flip this switch on, the arm opens, and it will direct any of those objects out of our system onto another uh, conveyor, which will drop it onto our loot conveyor. And then all those items will be brought up here to us. We don't have to go down in the factory and get it. Yeah, we can see that we got our ammo here, plus a lot of other junk. Also, remember, the overflow system for the separators is connected to this part of the system. So when we turned it on, all those items that weren't accepted or sorted came up here as well. Okay, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention real quick. The first one being, in case you're curious of what components that we have in our sorters, in the description below I will give a detailed listing of those components and what sorters they're in. Second, I know we skipped right over the electrical part of this build. The reason is, is because this video is already way too long. So, did make another video on that in case you'd like to go see it. And I will link that in the description below as well. And one final thing that's on my mind is, are these manufacturing objects something that other players use? And if so, why? Why do you use them? For me, and on a personal note, I find the manufacturing objects as useful as a poopy flavored lollipop. I have yet to find any real use for them. Now don't get me wrong, they are kinda helpful, but not real useful. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that's it for today's video. Thank you for coming, spending your precious time with me today. I really do appreciate it. And just like always, please, until next time, stay safe and peace.